His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received Dat Sukhai Paris today. Members of Al Jabr family who extended to His Majesty thanks and appreciation for his royal directives of naming one of Bahrain's major streets in the capital governorate under the name of the late Nasser bin Jabr Al Jabr. His Majesty expressed pride in the role of Arab tribes that relate to the rules of rulers of Bahrain and in their honorable national stances which embody Bahraini values. He commended the cohesion of the people of Bahrain, stressing that the kingdom will continue to be the one family country. On behalf of Al Jabr tribe, Mr. Nasser bin Hamid bin Rashid Al Jabr expressed gratitude to His Majesty for honoring the legacy of the loyal Bahraini men. He confirmed commitment to the path of their grandfather in serving the kingdom with loyalty and dedication, wishing His Majesty good health and happiness and for Bahrain further progress. His Majesty the King also received at Sukhir Palace today the President of the National Audit Office, Hassan Jalahma, who presented to His Majesty the Office's annual report for 2014 to 15. He commended the tremendous efforts of the Office, confirming the importance of preserving public funds and monitoring its spending. His Majesty commended the role of the Office in performing such responsibility and maintain its independence, which contributes in enhancing the performance of the state's ministries and institutions in services of the public interest. For his part, Mr. Jalahma, Lahma said the 12 annual reports include 100 monitoring missions that included various economic, service, health and environment sectors, which was followed by 117 reports. He said that they related to administrative and financial monitoring reports to measure the commitment of these bodies to laws and regulations in addition to internal monitoring system. He also confirmed the office is commitment or the commitment to implementing its policies, highlighting the continuous support of His Majesty the King to the office, which paved the way for its independence independence and work freedom, which enabled it to perform its responsibilities. His Majesty the King received at Sakhir Palace today the Foreign Ministry Under Secretary for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, who presented His Majesty a copy of his PhD thesis in International and Diplomatic Relations, which he attained from France. His Majesty congratulated Dr. Sheikh Abdullah and commended his efforts in attaining the advanced scientific degree, expressing pride in the kingdom's youth keenness to pursue the high scientific degrees which contribute in the progress of their homeland. For his part, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed thanked His Majesty for his constant support to the youth of Bahrain, wishing him further success in achieving the best interest of the kingdom.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudaybiyah Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Royal Highnesses discussed regional and international developments, affirming that international cooperation is key to overcome security and economic challenges. They stressed the importance of holding meetings and visits to help its in finding ways to further maintain stability and highlighted the positive outcomes of the Manama Dialogue in achieving for the progress and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also received at Gudaybiyah Palace the Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Salah, several members of the Shura and Representative Council in the presence of former Representative Speaker Khalifa Dahrani and senior state officials. His Royal Highness confirmed the government's keenness to meet the demands of development of that lift the living standards of citizens, stressing that the government is following the royal directives to invest in the available resources to achieve economic development. He voiced concern over the situation of some countries of the region, saying that some Arab countries' people have become homeless and were forced to immigrate due to the worsening situation in their country. He highlighted the necessity of strengthening international cooperation to help these people and provide them with shelter and living requirements, in addition to solving the problem that has led to the deteriorating situation, security and humanitarian situation. The Prime Minister said the scheme that has targeted some countries to harm its security and stability was also aimed to affect Bahrain, but the awareness and loyalty of the people failed such evil plans. His Royal Highness confirmed the government commitment to reinforce public participation in the decision-making process so as to engage the citizen and make them an effective partner in the programs dedicated to the people.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander First Deputy Premier. The cabinet commended the visit of Egyptian President el-Sisi to Bahrain recently and his meeting with His Majesty the King which confirmed the deep-rooted brotherly relations between the two countries and reflected the joint stances in various Arab and regional issues. The cabinet also commended el-Sisi's speech during the opening of the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue which supported Arab and Islamic issues. The meeting reviewed the brotherly visit of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that embodies their excellent historic relations, valuing the honourable stances and support of Saudi Arabia towards Bahrain in all fields. The Prime Minister thanked the Crown Prince for the success of the Manama Dialogue, which has proven Bahrain's keenness to organise such events and discuss international issues. He also praised the significant role of the Foreign Minister in its efforts in organising the Security Summit. In regards to the Prime Minister's recent visit to Muharraq, he directed Deputy Premier and head of the Ministerial Committee for Urbanization and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to follow up and implement all Muharraq projects in response to the people's needs. The Prime Minister also directed the Minister of Health to follow up the needs of the sickle cell disease patients and provide them with the required health care and facilities. The Cabinet then discussed issues on its agenda, which included a memorandum in regards to the amendment of some urbanization regulations, which was referred to the Legal Affairs Ministerial Committee for further discussion. They also discussed a memorandum regarding the completing of the needed legal tools in relation to decree by Law 25 for 2015 on the collection of the cost of infrastructure development in reconstruction areas. They referred to the Legal Affairs Ministerial Committee and memorandum regarding the ministerial decision on the public transport license licenses and activities and propose fees for individuals, companies and institutions. The meeting also reviewed issues in relation to the legislative authority. After the cabinet meeting, the Minister of Information Affairs and Representative on Shura Council Affairs, Isa Al Hamadi, held a press conference outlining the issues discussed. Addressing media personnel, the minister confirmed the Prime Minister's follow up on the health care provided to sickle cell disease patients. He highlighted that the number of families that benefit from financial subsidiary is 145,000. The minister also replied a number of questions of the attended journalists. His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Gudaybiyah Palace the Director General and Chief Executive of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. John Shipman, and IISS Middle East Executive Director Sir John Jenkins. Present were Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and Foreign Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The Crown Prince commended the successful organization of the Manama Dialogue and its role as an important international platform that contributes in facilitating political and diplomatic interaction. He highlighted the Manama Dialogue's role in exchanging views on regional and international issues, which embodies Bahrain's commitment to serving issues of security and peace. He stressed the importance of the issues discussed, asserting the necessity to review the reasons behind the international community's inability to deal with current challenges, in addition to their impact on humanitarian situation. The Crown Prince reiterated the Kingdom's support to the Manama Dialogue as one of the most important international forums that Bahrain has been able to attract on an annual basis, looking forward for further cooperation with the IISS. For his part, Dr. Chipman thanked the Crown Prince for his constant support to the Manama Dialogue and for facilitating the work of the Institute in holding all its events. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander First Deputy Premier received at Gudaybiyah Palace the outgoing Egyptian Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. Issam Awad Al Safir, in presence of the Foreign Affairs Minister and the Crown Prince pointed to the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Egypt. He appreciated Egypt's supportive stances towards the security and stability of the region and highlighted the talks that were held between His Majesty the King and Egyptian President recently, confirming that the Kingdom values Egypt's strategic role in the region. The Crown Prince commanded El Sisi's speech during the opening of the Manama Dialogue, valuing his readiness to cooperate with regional and international powers that realize the importance of the Arab world's stability.
He praised the tremendous efforts of the outgoing Egyptian ambassador and his contributions in reinforcing bilateral relations, wishing him further support. For his part, the outgoing ambassador thanked the Crown Prince for all the support he received that facilitated his diplomatic mission and loaded his care to consolidate Bahraini-Egyptian relations, wishing the kingdom further progress. A very good evening, you're watching the business news on Bahrain Television. Based on a report released yesterday by the World Islamic Banking, the GCC Islamic Banking has crossed $12 billion for the first time in 2014, with expectations that the banking sector will grow despite the regional uncertainty. The report also identifies a group of 40 banks that are systematically important to the future of the industry, and out of these 40, over 50% have an equality base of more than $1 billion. The Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,260.68 points, an increase of 9.41 points above last closing. The rise was in the commercial banks and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the investment sector, representing 96.28% of total shares traded. 59 transactions took place with a volume of 14,847,652 shares, worth 5,062,259 Bahraini dinars.